Have you ever seen an EKG? Did you ever wonder what those squiggly lines are actually saying? My name is Dr. Carolina Melgar, and today I would like to talk to you about an EKG. An electrocardiogram records the electrical signals of the heart. It's a very useful and painless test used to quickly detect heart problems and monitor the heart's health. It can be done in a doctor's office, a clinic, or a hospital room, even an ambulance and you can also do them at home. What can we see in an EKG? Well, it can help us diagnose many heart problems, from a simple tachycardia to a variety of complex and more serious arrhythmias. We can find out if there are blocked or narrowed arteries in the heart that can cause chest pains or even a heart attack. EKGs can also tell us whether you have had a previous heart attack. And we also use it to determine how well certain treatments are working. So you may ask yourself, when do I need an EKG? These are the situations I call red flags. So if you feel chest pain or shortness of breath, lightheadedness or dizziness, heart palpitations, weakness, fatigue, less ability to exercise than you usually do, nausea, sweating, or even the feeling that you might pass out. Those are the situations in which I recommend an EKG. Remember that if you have a family history of heart disease, your doctor might suggest an EKG as a fast screening test, even if you have no symptoms. Sometimes the symptoms tend to come and go and they may not be detected during a standard EKG. They could happen during the night or last only a few minutes, not giving you enough time to reach to the doctor's office and get an EKG done. That is why I recommend to have a portable EKG monitor with you at all times. It can help your doctor identify what kind of arrhythmias or other heart problems you might be experiencing. There are other types of continuous EKG monitors, for example, a halter monitor. This is a small wearable device that records a continuous EKG for 24 to up to 48 hours. Another kind of monitor is a lube recorder. This is also a portable device similar to the halter monitor, but you can wear it for a longer period of time, up to 30 days. Some pacemakers can also work as heart monitors. They keep a registry of any event the patient has experienced. So how exactly does an EKG work? Traditionally, the EKG has 12 leads and it sends us electrical impulses generated by the heart. So we can see different areas, the anterior, the inferior, and the lateral part of the heart. During an EKG study, small patches called electrodes stick to the skin and are placed in different spots of the chest, arm, and legs. I like to think of them as one little person looking at your heart from a different point of view. So when we have information coming from 12 different leads, we can have the whole picture. So when you see an EKG and start to notice all those wavy lines, you might think that understanding them is very complicated, but stay with me and I'll show you what a normal and an abnormal EKG can look like. So first, we're going to talk about the normal rhythms of the heart. These are called the sinus rhythms. So what you're going to see are different waveforms that represent the electric activity of the heart. So the first wave you're going to see is the P wave. It's a small deflection like a little mountain. It's showing us the electric impulse that's going through the atria of the heart. Then we have the QRX complex right over here. It represents the electric impulse that's going through the ventricles of the heart. You'll notice it's much more taller than the P wave. This is only because the ventricles are bigger, so there's much more electricity going through them. Then you're going to see the T wave. The T wave is when the electricity is kind of reversing from the ventricles. It represents the relaxing part of their cycle. So basically, in every sinus rhythm, you should see a P wave, a QRS complex, and then a T wave. Now let's look at some other features that can indicate us that we're in front of normal sinus rhythm. So the first thing we should look at is if it's regular, meaning is there an equal amount of space between every QRS complex, like this, like this, and like this. The second thing you need to look at is rate. A normal heart rate is between 60 and 100 beats per minute. Any slower, it's too slow. Any faster is too fast. Number three, we should ask ourselves, do I see a P wave? 
If there is no P waves, we definitely know there's a problem because the atria is not contracting like it should. We should always see one P wave and then one QRS complex. So this would be a normal sinus rhythm. Of course, I wish all my patients would have this heart rhythm. I hope you liked it so far. In my next video, I'll show what bradycardia and tachycardia look like. Thank you for watching.